All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are gonna be doing the beginner's guide. And this is kind of a long topic since it's a Genshin Impact full guide. What I'm gonna be doing is breaking this down into different sections. So there's gonna be timestamps, which is why I will have in the description. And you can click below to find the portion of the video you are most interested in. On top of that, there's gonna be tips tricks i'm also going to try to break down the free to play characters you receive in this game the ones you get near the beginning and some other basic combat strategy guides things that you want to focus on first and really everything you need to know when you get started as well as things i wish i knew and things that i wish i did not do okay so there's going to be a whole bunch of information in here for either beginners which is what's focused on or if you're a long time player you'll probably enjoy either some of the stories or you might learn a thing or two as well. This is gonna be a high quality video, so please do hit the like button and subscribe if you would like more of these instructional informative type of videos. And without further ado, I love you all. Let's get going. Few quick terminology things that will help us save time. The ultimate ability or your elemental burst is a Q on the PC. That's what I will reference it as, the Q or the E, which is the elemental skill, okay? The Q is sort of the ultimate, takes energy and has a cooldown. E just has a cooldown, doesn't take energy. Charge attack I'll pretty much always refer to as a charge attack or a charge, and a basic attack or an auto attack or just an auto is what we refer to as the normal attack. AR or rank is almost always gonna to refer to adventure rank, which is right here. For instance, I am AR 51, which puts me at a world level of seven. And if you're wondering what world level is, it is very easily explained by clicking the information button, but essentially at different adventure ranks, your world will be upgraded if you choose to upgrade it with the Ascension quest. At that point, the enemies become harder and drop better loot. This can be very crucial to farming better gear from elite mobs and elite bosses. However, at a certain point, there is diminishing returns and some people actually don't upgrade it all the way, but that is a topic for another video. Okay, there's really a couple things that you should do first. One of the things you should do first is get to adventure rank 12. Once you're at AR 12, what that's gonna unlock for you is commissions. You see how I have these little purple quests on the map here? Those are daily commissions. If I do them, I get adventure rank experience. If I do all of them in the day, I get bonus rewards, primo gems, which are the premium currency you really, really, really need, as well as a bonus adventure rank experience too, okay? Just for completing all of them on top of the normal amount you get. It, which is really a big deal because adventure rank is what's stopping you from hitting your higher levels And if you didn't know you can only ascend your characters to a certain level till you're locked out by your adventure rank Once you hit 50 you've unlocked all of it up to level 90, which is the max Okay, one of the questions I get all the time is how do I get more stamina or how do I increase my stamina bar, right? All right, so this one's actually really annoying to do you know these statues that are around here both in this area, which is Mondstadt, as well as Wayu, but they have the Geo ones. You have to get those Oculuses, those little floating balls that are floating around, all right? You get them and you sacrifice them to the statues. And every time you sacrifice them and you hit a new level, you get more additional stamina, just like that. You worship them here. See, I've got it all maxed out, so my stamina bar is full. And this is actually a really important thing to do and is one of the first things you need to do in the entire game. Because you see charge attacks, they take stamina. So right next to getting an AR, you know, your AR up to 16 so you can play co-op with your buddies, the first thing that I would recommend doing is rushing yourself to get as many Oculuses as you possibly can to increase your stamina bar. And that will also upgrade your map so you can see more. Every time you get one of those new statues, it's going to upgrade your map around that area so you can see around that area now. And it's also a teleport waypoint as well. Plus it's very important because if you want your traveler, who's your main character, right, to be able to go from wind to geo element, you have to go find your first geo statue and commune with the geo statue with your traveler and that will turn him into the geo element. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you real quick, check this out. You see how my traveler has different moves than the ones you start with, he is geo element. That's because I found a geo statue, I communed with it and I can go right back and commune to the wind and become wind again if I want to. For this reason, the main character is actually somebody important to work on because you can get multiple 
multiple elements within one character, as well as the game continues to update, you're eventually going to be able to have all seven elements just within the main character himself. If you're still fairly new to the game and you're not really sure where to go or what to do, just hit the J button if you're on the computer, or if you're not on the computer, you can just go to your main menu and go to Quest here, okay? Or there's even another shortcut, which is just from this screen right here. You can click right up here in the top left and you can see your quest. The story quests are the main quests you want to work on. However, it's gonna lock you out of some of them because it's gonna say, oh, you need AR-16, you need AR-28, you need AR-32. Basically what they're saying is, hold on there, you can't just rush through all the story, you're gonna go out now and do some other things in the world to get to a level, then come back and complete the story when you're stronger. So what are these other things that we can do? Obviously you can do your commission quest or you can hit J and look for side quest or world quest that you could do. Do those, take those rewards and then go back and see if you can do it again. However, you can also work on your weapons. Something I recommend doing is talking to the blacksmith and once every day you can ask for tips to finding ore. Once you get that tip, it's gonna show you on the map where the ore is. Once you get to that ore, it's gonna have crystal chunks, the blue ones, magic crystal chunks. These are the magic ones. So you get three of them from each of the different cities that they'll give you a tip on it. So the blacksmith Amonstag gave me a tip for three locations. And then Layu sometimes does three, sometimes they do even more actually. I've had it do up to, I wanna say five different locations that they recommended. And now there we go, you take these crystal chunks. Then once you have the ore, you can run back here to your blacksmith. You can talk to him and say, all right, Right, I'd like to make something, all right? This is here, you can take 10 resin plus three of those blue magic pieces. And there we go. We're forging six more of this mystic enhancement ore. You can take the ore and what does the mystic enhancement ore does? Well, it works on your weapons, which is just as important as working on your characters, okay? And we're about to talk about how to level your characters, how to work on your weapons, all of that here in just a moment, but we need to talk about resin first because as you just saw, we used resin. So what is resin? Well, you have a cap of 160 resin and it generates at one resin per eight minutes. You can purchase more resin daily. It goes 50 primos and then 100 primos, then 150, then 200, then 200 again. Resin is used on almost anything that's gonna give you rewards, including but not limited to daily bosses like those cubes that you're gonna fight. However, the ones that I typically use it on is things like weapon enhancement materials or the elite bosses are a pretty important one when you're sending characters or farming artifacts. There's a lot of different things the resin is really required for. In fact, resin's basically what bottlenecks you on your adventure rank for the most part, especially when you get to the higher levels with the game kind of consists of logging in, doing your dailies, using your resin, and then exploring for chests tends to be sort of the end game psycho, okay? However, if you're a beginner, you have a much wider variety of activities to do. That's why I do recommend mostly just exploring the map when you need to level your adventure rank in order to do your story quest, especially if you're like below AR 30 or even below AR 40, for the most part, you're gonna have a chest or a puzzle or something to do almost anywhere you go on the map. In fact, I'll give you an example. If I get out of this screen here and just show you, click the M button. I recently, as in like just a couple AR ago, found this spot right here in the valley that is just nestled all the way back in the bottom left corner of the map. There is this puzzle built into the game that you have to go through these three independent towers. And I don't really want to spoil it for you, but you can see the three towers right here. And that's just built in as a world exploration thing. You go there, you get a whole bunch of loot, a whole bunch of adventure rank. There's just a lot of cool things in the map that you're just gonna have to go find, okay? So that's what I would recommend doing, plus you need your stamina anyway from your Oculuses. So it's kind of a win-win, especially in the beginning. Let's do a quick rundown on how to get your characters stronger. There's leveling them up, which is gonna require books. You get books for doing almost anything in this game, namely ley lines. Now, on top of it, there's also your talents, which your talents can be leveled up as well. These require books as well of a different nature. These books here are talent books and you do these through domains which cost resin, okay? It takes a combination of that and when you get to the higher levels, also the weekly 
bosses will drop pieces needed to get to the higher talent levels and also world mobs are dropping pieces required for the talent levels as well okay keep in mind when you level with talents it increases the ratio of the damage meaning talents are incredibly important because the other way you're going to upgrade your characters is through artifacts to increase their damage etc and the artifacts as you get better and better artifacts are going to become stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger based upon your base attack okay and your ratios are scaled based upon your artifacts, right? So it's like 250% well, your, of your total you know, attack or whatever, which means your artifacts need to be good and your artifacts scale based upon your base attack. Well, what's your base attack? Your base attack is your character's default stats, meaning no artifacts, nothing, just the character themselves with their level. So, you know, 89 is a lower base stat than 90 level would be, okay? plus the base attack of your weapon. That is your base attack, and then these modifiers and all that come in afterwards and are percentages of those two pieces combined. So for that reason, the best thing you can do to upgrade a character is first its weapon, then your artifacts, then your talents, okay? But keep in mind, leveling the character is always more important than any of these at all. Sometimes you're gonna have like, oh no, I don't have these pieces, what do I do? And you go to do it and you're like, hey, it's not Tuesday, it's not Friday. Yeah, some days are the only days you can get certain pieces, okay? It's not random, it's always set in stone. For that reason, learn the rotation or make sure that on the day that you know you're gonna need something, you max that out. Meaning, if you're about to go to AR50 and go from level 80 to 90 with all your units, you probably want to prepare all those materials in advance so you can send the character right away. Same if you're going from like, 40 to 50 or something. It's way better to have one character fully maxed out than three characters kind of okay. This is the standard standard in all goshes, okay? Make sure you max out your main character first, but you're also gonna need a healer. So I would recommend one main damage dealer is your main character, a, a healer, really anyone will do, and then you can kind of throw in like a support utility or sub DPS. Another thing that's important is to make sure you're doing your expeditions every day. If you talk to the Adventure Guild chick Catherine here, and you go dispatch characters on expeditions, what you can see here is that, I'll clear mine out, is that you can send your people out on expeditions and based upon how long they've been out there, you can get yourself rewards. Now, some characters are better than others at the expeditions. For instance, if you look here, Fischel, for instance, went in Modstad, the time decreased by 25%. Same in Laiyu for other people like Changyang. Okay, I do recommend 100%. The one you want to always farm is the ore. The ore is way more annoying and you'll need way more of that than you're gonna need anything else. And then after that, it's either either the food or maybe the mora. I mean, the mora, you're still gonna need a ton of in this game. So get to farming. Also, the, when you dispatch the characters, it no longer takes them off your party. You can just throw them in there, come back, pick them up later, no big deal. All right, let's do some combat tips and tricks in order to give you guys some basic rundown on the combat. Now, what we have here is an enemy. If you know this, he should have hit me there, but he didn't. So if you use your dash, your sprint, it gives you iframes or invulnerability frames, meaning at certain parts during the dash, you are in fact invulnerable. You will not take damage, okay? This is a crucial core mechanic of the game. If you're not good with the dash mechanic, you need to become good with the dash mechanic. It is required in order to really complete a large chunk of this game. Keep in mind, some bosses uh, have undodgeable moves, meaning you can sit there and think, oh my God, I played amazing and yet you still got destroyed. And also some bosses here do not have the ability of dying to anything but certain elements. For instance, I have to have fire or ice, for instance, in order to kill this boss. But if I didn't have the right elements and I was just sitting there attacking him with a Nemo, for instance, I would not be able to actually finish killing this boss. So if for some reason you're not damaging anyone at all, consider elements or there could be some kind of buff situation going on that you need to clear with a different element. So shields are kind of the same way as those bosses. Certain elements are needed to break them. So here's Cryo and obviously fire is gonna melt it, right? 
If I use a geo element or something like that, it would damage it as well, but fire is the one that beats ice. Just think Pokemon, and normally you can pretty much guess which element's gonna beat which, okay? It's not that hard to figure that out. Shields on yourself are pretty much the same way. They're gonna generate a shield that stops the damage of the element of the shield you have. You can see I have a Geo Elemento shield here, and so if a Geo person hit me, well, I would be protected from that damage until the shield busted. Resources regenerate fairly slowly. I'm not sure the exact rate. It seems different for different resources, but if I take this Radish here, I can assume safely that by tomorrow that Radish is probably gonna be there again. However, things like this mushroom don't always seem to regenerate at exactly the given times, okay? So if you're trying to farm something and you're running out of materials for something, let's say you need a lot of mushrooms because the characters you need for whatever reason just need them, you might want to consider getting yourself some friends so you can join their world to farm it as well. Try hitting up the co-op system, asking them if it's okay if you can share some of their you know, mushrooms or whatever it will be. Keep in mind things like ore, the ore that level up your weapons can actually be shared in co-op as long as you guys are near each other. I believe it's within 50 meters of each other. When you break it, you both can in fact get the ore. Meet my cat, this is Paimon the Kitty. Subscribe for Paimon, her name's actually Paimon. I named her that because she's very, very annoying. All she does is bother me. <laughs> there are only a certain amount of shrines in the game. The loot is the same. It doesn't get better with the world level. I've opened them at level one and at world level seven, okay? So if you have a key, that means there's a shrine still to get. And there's also a really good map that you can use, which I'll put a link to in the description, which has a link to all the oculuses as well as all of the shrines. So you can use that to find it if you would like. However, I do recommend playing the game free to play, casual, not hardcore, not grindy, and not using the map as kind of a Zelda type experience. But if you would like to play it the other way, uh, the, the resource is there. The reputation systems now in the game is definitely worth doing. It's located here in Mondstadt, or you can find it in Layu near the harbor. I'll show you real quick right there. So if you check out this here, this is worth doing because if you look at the reputations, and I want to show you the rewards, check this out. You get these different recipes, right? Well, what's this one? The NRE, ready to eat. Oh, that seems cool. The Nemo Treasure Compass. There it is, step-by-step -step diagram to making a treasure compass. Use it to easily locate treasure all over Mondstadt. This will actually hone you in on chests and help you find them. This is nuts. I'm working on my reputation for Laiyu to get the Laiyu one before I do the Mondstadt one. I think I just have more chests to locate in Laiyu first. But that this video isn't too long, this is gonna do it for part one. Subscribe and hit the bell so that way you can see part two. And I will see you shortly for today's live stream at twitch.tv slash Darth Microtransaction. Love y'all and I'll see you tomorrow on this channel for tomorrow's video. You can click here or here if you want to see another video. Or you can click in the middle of the sub. Okay, bye-bye.